Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and in this video I'm going to show you how to, well, not parallel charge but charge another battery uh, once your 18650 is full uh, in combination with a solar panel so obviously you connect your solar panel into the input the minus and the positive your battery is connected as usual through the B plus and B minus and the K um, terminals or the out plus and out minus are your usual battery output terminals well not battery output but voltage output protected outputs of this TP4056 module uh, now you need this one because uh, this one has a charge indicator and a battery full indicator so once that one's lit you know that the battery isn't charging anymore and we're going to use that in order to toggle um, a MOSFET that will basically redirect the energy into another battery now one thing to keep in mind is that you still need to connect a battery charge controller of any form to the output of the MOSFET you can't just hook it up to an, another 18650 or a 12 volt uh, lead acid battery you need to be able to regulate uh, the output power of that battery or to that battery so what you need uh, you need a uh, MOSFET I'm going to use the RF5305 some wires uh, 1.2k ohm resistor and a 1k ohm resistor of course the TP4056 and a lithium ion battery um, so let's get started immediately now if you take a look at the the LED you know you have got this one let me zoom in this one is the charging LED and this one is the LED that um, goes lit when the charging is complete and we are going to use that one uh, if you take a look at the schematic of this um, board you can see that this LED uh, is connected from here to there to the resistor to this output pin of the chip and when that's pulled low it indicates that the charging is complete so we're going to take advantage of that now you might want to remove um, that charge complete LED because it may be eating all the current so that's up to you so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, 1.2k ohm resistor we're going to cut the leads very short because we don't need it to be the, that big uh, let me grab a helping hand to hold this board in place now please be careful uh, a battery is connected so the circuit is live-ish always helpful when you try to solder things the actual solder so pre-tin them a little bit so this is the 1.2k ohm resistor and what you need to do is pick it up solder one side to the input voltage side Ah, I need to thin my tip a little bit better so one side to the input voltage side and that's not properly connected that's better but keep it away from the chip that's good now we're going to solder the other side of the resistor to the side uh, of the LED where the onboard resistor goes to and that's this side 
So bend it down a little, but not too much. Oh, my helping hand just came loose. Bend it down a little, not too much. And then solder it onto the LED. Like such. So that's step one. Now step two. Get the other resistor. Got one side of the lead. There you go. And pre thin it. And solder it to that same place, like so. Now we've got two resistors. One resistor is uh, the pull up for the MOSFET. So we know for sure that the MOSFET isn't turned on um, when we don't want it to be on. Since this is the toggle wire, we need to connect to the gate of the MOSFET. That's this one. So the pins are source, drain and gate. So what you could do is just solder it directly to the MOSFET lead. pre thin it, of course, as usual. Now you need to make sure that you actually put a little heat shrink over the thing. Now that one is too long. that little heat shrink solder the MOSFET to that resistor be careful not to activate the heat shrink shove it over and heat shrink it. Now it isn't fully protected, but that's okay. Because it's only there for uh, the MOSFET pin protection things. So now your toggle circuitry is ready. I thought I had another black wire. Ah, there you go. So what we need to do now is um, prepare the voltage pins. Now the the output of the MOSFET will be the positive uh, terminal. So ground is always connected and positive is not. So strip a cable. And pre thin it. that also add a heat shrink to that cable and this is going to be the output cable so pre thin the MOSFET and now we're at it might as well pre in the other pin as well. Now grab your uh, 
cable and solder it to the middle pin of the MOSFET and wait for it to cool because otherwise the heat shrink will activate and it's very important that this one needs to be shrunken properly as so Alright, so that's done. Now there's only one pin left. And that is the positive voltage input pin. Again, strip pre thin all the usual things. heat shrink one that's big enough place it over on the wire and finally solder this wire to the last pin of the MOSFET Like so. Wait for it to cool down. And then slide the heat shrink over the wire. And shrink it. So now there needs to be a, a one final heat shrink on this and that's a big one is this one going to fit yes it is it needs to go on the top of the MOSFET so that uh, you can't short it out accidentally well for the most part so we've got two wires now this is the input uh, and this is the output, the switched output. And strip them as well. Now I like to screw uh, these two wires directly um, onto a screw terminal that connects to the solar panel because I haven't uh, soldered my solar panel directly to this chip. Because if it uh, ever breaks, you can just replace it very easily. And uh, of course in my other video where I did the ESP8266 energy consumption test, I wanted to measure the current uh, that's, uh, that was delivered by the solar panel. So I was needed to uh, put my measurement uh, devices in between. Get two heat shrinks. Shove them over the wires. Now for good measure I will be showing you how to connect the wires so that the circuitry works. So you have got the let me switch them. You've got the, 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 the red wire. This is the positive voltage input and you need to solder that one to the input of your power source so in this example uh, the solar panel I'm going to strip this again and solder these together so that's easier to handle
voila. So, input. And this is your switched output. So what you need to do when you are ready and you have connected uh, everything. The green wire is the positive input voltage of your battery charge controller. And you still need to route a negative wire to the negative input of your charge controller. And yeah, the rest just works. Now keep an eye on the resistor. Um, yeah, I think you're able to break it quite quick if you don't uh, be careful with it. So we're going to do a little test. And I'm going to grab my tool. What we're going to do is we're going to charge it using my lab bench, not using a solar panel because that will take way too long. And we're going to keep an eye on the on the voltages. And especially on the output voltage of the the MOSFET. So I'll put it in voltage mode, connect my positive terminal. Like that. Uh, oh my, we can. Yeah, this. Just plug it into the lab bench with the banana plug. It's better. Like that. Let me turn this. This. Right. So currently it's measuring something. Not sure what, but it's measuring something. Uh, negative wire of the lab bench goes to the negative wire of the input, and the other one goes to the input the positive input and now I'm going to set the lead bench at around 5 volts and if we turn it on you can see it's charging and the MOSFET is disabled because there's uh, dotted lines on the screen it's meaning that it's not getting any uh, any current or any power now I'm going to take it loose for a second and measure 4.2 so I think we should see a switch really quick and when the thing switches oh uh, yeah when the thing switches to the blue LED this should show around uh, five and a half volts so let's wait for that Now the reason I'm doing this is I noticed in good weather with lots of sun uh, the battery was full. I had I've connected five of these in parallel and it was completely topped out. And uh, after a day this thing starts getting really hot because it's dumping all the incoming energy and that's just a waste of energy. So then uh, I came up with the idea to connect a MOSFET to it to switch energy target to a uh, another thing and I've connected a booster from this with this one and this one that boosts the voltage up to 13 volts and I've connected the output of the booster to a 12 volt lead acid battery so that's getting charged uh, when the, the sun's out for too long and the 18650s are full As you can see, it just completed charging. And oh, I think the multimeter went into timeout mode. The output voltage of the MOSFET is 5.5 volts, which is the input voltage. So we know it's working. And let me try and see if I can find a resistor, oh, a resistor somewhere we can use to dump some energy I think yeah this one is 
should be all right and you can see that the blue led very gently lights up uh, now we need to connect it to the output which are these two and as you can see it immediately switches off because of the current that's being drawn by the thing and the battery voltage drops a little and it goes back to charging mode immediately let's disconnect the power supply for a moment dump some energy should be enough, turn it back on and it goes to charging so now as I said you need to connect your battery monitor and charging controller to this one and to the negative, negative incoming wire not the uh, wire that's going uh, from this one to everything else because this will be turned off uh, by the um, by the charge controller. You don't want that. And this circuitry will wait till the other batteries are full, and then switch the the power over uh, via the MOSFET. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if I don't forget it, I will try to post a schematic in the description, so you can. Um, you can copy uh, the schematic onto your uh, own TP54056. So thanks for watching and have a nice day. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Make sure to leave a comment down below. You can also share this video with your friends if you think they will like it too. See you next time.